Listen, welcome back to another episode of DAPS. Now, <clears throat> I've been I've been listening, I've been watching, I've been paying attention to what's happening with um, black people. I've been reflecting. I've also been kind of reassessing, recalibrating, if you want to call it that, where my perspective is and where I stand on some of these things that, that I'm seeing in the media. Um, the two brothers that are on the media right now, on the internet, on every platform that everybody seems to talk about are Mr. Ye and Mr. Irving. And the more I listen and the more I pay attention to not what they have said or haven't said, but it's what the rest of us are saying about what they have said or what's being asked of them, what's being taken from them, and also where we stand when it comes to them. Because we're also confused, and I think... We are the perfect target for the media outlets to really, um, you know, for us to do all their bidding, if you want to call it that. Because I'm realizing everybody's repeating the same rhetoric. No one digging deep to find out what's really going on. No one seems to care. Everybody just wants the clicks. Everybody wants the baits and so forth. So that really kind of shook me. Like it bothered me to an extent because I realize it's not a black or a color thing for the most part that we we dislike other people um, or we want to see other people fail. But it's a people thing. It's a human thing. Like It's almost like the rags to riches or... Uh, story, but we don't, we, we outgrown that story. We no longer appreciate that story. And now we are seeking for this crabs in a barrel. Uh, you made it to the top and I want to see you come back down right next to me so that, I don't know. So, so that what I have no idea, but that's what it feels like because now we have our own people tearing down their brothers and they don't even have the full scope of the story. They're just going with a script that's been either handed to them or they feel it's the best script to use because it gives us the views, the clicks, right? Which means, I mean, I guess in one end, we get more money in our pockets when we do that. So we got to tear somebody down to make a dollar. That might be what's happening. I don't know. All I know is that it bothered me enough to give you this episode. And... First of all, I want to take a moment to just thank you for listening, uh, for being here, supporting this show and supporting me every week, um, putting together a Patreon page, and I hope that you'll continue to support me there and, um, you know, continue to subscribe, follow, hit the like button if you're watching this on um, online, on YouTube, just, you know, click the subscribe, hit the bell so that you'll be notified for another episode. Because the videos are coming, okay? With all that said, I'm born black, right? And pardon my ignorance. I'm using the term black because that's what everybody else is going to understand. But I also am aware that black is a term that is only used in the West. If I go anywhere else across the globe, they don't use the term black. Right. They'll ask me where I'm from and I'll tell them, OK, I'm from Ghana. And they'll use that because nobody says um, um, I'm white. They'll say I am Portuguese or I am Italian. It's only in the West, right, North America, that we say we are black. Black people are identified as black, but we are not. If I'm with my African family members or brothers and, and, and things of that nature, we don't say we're black. We say you're from Nigeria, you're from Uganda, you're from here, right? So 
that's how we I, I identify. And so it's so unfortunate, but again, I'm just trying to educate people on that. Um, but pardon my ignorance for using black, but I just want to make sure I'm speaking the universal language that everybody else can understand when I say that. You ever wonder what it feels like to be born black? I don't know if anybody has, has thought about that or processed that. Who isn't black, right? Have you ever wondered um, what I think about and how I feel at times, right? Now, I, I'm aware that many of you don't care about any of that, whether, you know, I think about these things or not. But I want to share something with you guys today. And I hope that you find it interesting. I think it might be interesting. I've heard a lot of people say, um, I couldn't change it if I could. And... That's pertaining to the color of our skin, right? I've heard people say that. But then I question, would you change it if you could? Because that's a different question. That's a different idea. That's a different way of looking at what you're considering a situation, right? Because really, would you change your skin type? If you could. I don't know. I can't speak for you, but I, I think we say a lot of these things. And sometimes we want pity or attention. Right? Because it, it appears we say those things for others to give us um, empathy and or pity. When really we're trying to get understanding we're trying to get our voices heard on a particular subject matter right and that's where we fall short because communication may not be our strongest suit as people not as black people but just as people in general right um what skin type then would you change yours to if you could Is my follow-up question. If you could change it, first, would you? And what skin type would you change it to? And then my follow-up to that question would be, why? Give me your reasoning as to why you would change it. Now, I don't expect you guys to respond to me um, with your thoughts, right? Right? But I, I do, I do hope you will try and sit in your own, um, with your own time and see how you answer those questions. If you've ever had that thought to begin with, because if you haven't had that thought of, you know, or make, made that statement of, um, if I could, I would change it, then it doesn't apply to you. But if you have, then try to answer these questions and maybe you'll find your reasoning may, may not be as strong or it may be very strong depends on where you are mentally right um then what benefits or privileges are you seeking in return for changing it to this type that you now want okay because that's those are two different things but again it gives you perspective it gives me perspective on where it is that you stand or where you're coming from. You know, um, and and again, let me tie this back into the rant that I kind of started off the episode with. Because a lot of people have also said it's because these two brothers are black and that's why they're being treated the same the way they are. And I would be lying if I said I didn't agree with that. I do agree with that. It's a large part of it. And 
it's unfortunate because they are actually two great individuals in their own rights. But they can't change who they are as far as their pigment. Right? So what are they to do? What are they to do? Um, so recently, I heard an interview, and um, it was with James Baldwin and uh, Nikki Giovanni. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a great, great conversation. and I think we can all learn something from it, even though it's an old conversation. It's one of those conversations, like many conversations or music from that era, um, it's just timeless. So if you can find it online, um, please jump on it, and, and I think you'll appreciate it. But I heard James Baldwin say something um, in this interview that moved me in a way that, you know, I didn't anticipate. And that's a part of the reason why this episode is happening as well, not just the two brothers that I mentioned earlier, but that conversation also spawned something in me, and so I want to talk to you guys about it. Now, pardon me, because I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit. Yeah, it went something along the lines of a black person has to watch the white society. He or she lives in because um, his or her life is in their hands. That's a lot. Right? Now, and then in the return, he continues and says, they don't have to watch you the same way because they control the society. Which means they control what you read, what you watch, and what you listen to. So everything that you consume is coming from them to some extent, right? And I thought, wow, if that's the case, then it makes sense. Mind you, this was an interview way back when. I'm sure it's probably before I was born. I'm pretty sure of it, right? But it was way back when, and it still stands true today. So... What's changed? Have we made progress or have we just gone backwards? Now I'm speaking to black people. <laughs> I'm also speaking to white people or those who are in control of said things, you know. And um, that got me back in my poetry vibe where I went to one of my favorites I read a few of his poems, Langston Hughes, and uh, one that really stuck with me was I Too. And so here I wrote my own rendition of it because it really spoke to me as, as you know, many of his poems speak to me often. So I want to share that with you and I hope it it moves you the way you know, the conversation moved me and I hope that it inspires or sparks something in you to allow you to become a better version of you or encourage someone else who is trying, you know, to become a better version of themselves. Right? So here's my rendition of it. I too. I too am wealthy. I am the outspoken brother. They send me to lie to my siblings because I make music. But I smile and I sleep well. But it feels wrong. Tomorrow, I'll be on a billboard. When the money's gone, nobody will care. Nobody will care that I'm the intelligent brother. Schooling my siblings about this here game. Besides, <laughs> they'll see my genius and influence and be afraid. I too 
and powerful. So that's my version of it. Langston's version is a little different. But I thought I would write this version because it relates to who I am today. It relates to a lot of you listening and watching. And I'm hoping that, you know, it inspires something. It triggers something. It evokes something. Right? Because I'm looking at the landscape today. The virtual landscape, that is, because it's so far different from the reality, right? The real landscape that we walk every day, we go to work through. It's a little different, you know? So this is how I feel sometimes about the outspoken, influential, and intellectual black men, right? And they are powerful, they are extremely powerful. And because they are powerful, they need to be silenced. And unfortunately, the powers that be don't silence them themselves. They allow us. Right? Their immediate circles, their ecosystems to silence them. And it's essential to know what you are worth. Know your worth. Knowing this world doesn't value you. I'm encouraging every single one of you to just make sure you understand what your value is. What you bring to any space, every table that you are going to be sitting at. Okay? And um, I really just want to speak to my brothers out there. Making it work with the little that you have. Right? To those fighting the system in order to see their kids, right? And their mother isn't making it easy for them, right? To those on the brink of losing it, I want you to know how important you are, right? Not only to yourself, but everyone that you cross paths with. And with that, I wrote another piece that I want to share. Okay, this one's called Alive. And again, it's another rendition of a Langston Hughes poem, right? So it's influenced by Langston. You can clearly tell he's one of my favorites. So if you don't know about Langston, you need to check it out. I mean, there are other great poets that are out there that you can definitely look up. Um, I'm just focusing on Langston because his pieces that I read and the books that I have, this one, inspired me as well so this one's called alive i am alive bright as a day's smile dark as the flesh of africa i've been poor the ghetto has thickened my skin i have stolen from here before so i could see tomorrow i've been a student between my ears i was never a slave They've written stories about people like me. I am an artist. All the way from Ghana to the north. I carried my canvases with style. I made art for all to explore. I've been working. Every day with a new purpose. I don't want to survive to get by. I am a person. Bright as the day's smile. And dark as the flesh of Africa. So, there's nothing easy about being born black. Because there are many situations when you must divorce yourself in order to stay, in order to safely walk through a door. Think about that. There's so many situations where you wish you weren't. Right? And it goes back to what I said before. If you could, would you, and which pigment would you, you know, settle for? But this is just some of the feelings that a lot of black males go through. Right? People of Africa, African descent, right, have always been an afterthought to the world. I mean, 
I guess I'm going to have to say in the perspective or, or from the vantage point of, of the West, but I mean, it's in Europe too. You know what I mean? This remains true in the 21st century. Like, all you have to do is literally look around, listen with an objective mind and a soulful heart because better known, I guess, as understanding and empathy towards others, right? If you have that, I think you help make the world a better place, right? Because it's not enough to apologize when you're a person of color. You are expected to demonstrate that you mean it and that you won't make that same mistake, right? Or comment again. The African will always be guilty until proven innocent, but he will not be judged by a jury of his peers. I wish I made that up. <laughs> he will be stripped of his manhood, principles, and pride because that is the Willie Lynch way of the West. Systems are broken. They've been broken, right? But um, I want to recite this poem that is actually Langston Hughes' poem to you, right? As you continue on your journey. And I hope that it provides perspective and understanding in your days to come because this one really did it for me, right? And it's called Let America Be America Again. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plane, seeking a home where he himself is free. America never was America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great strong land of love where never kings connive nor tyrant scheme that any man be crushed by one above it never was america to me oh let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath but opportunity is real and life is free equality is in the air we breathe there's never been equality for me nor freedom in this homeland of the free. Say, who are you that mumbles in the dark? And who are you that draws your veil across the stars? I am the poor white fooled and pushed apart. I am the Negro bearing slavery scars. I am the red man driven from the land. I am the immigrant clutching the hope I seek and finding only the same old stupid plan of dog eat dog, of mighty crush the weak. I am the young man full of strength and hope, tangled in that ancient endless chain of profit, power, gain, of grab the land, of grab the gold, of grab the ways of satisfying need, of work the men, of take the pay, of owning, everything for one's own greed. I am the farmer, the bondsman to the soil. I am the worker sold to the machine. I am the Negro servant to you all. I am the people, humble, hungry, mean. Hungry yet today despite the dream, beaten yet today, oh, pioneers. I am the man who never got ahead, the poorest worker, bartered, bartered through the years. Yes, I'm the one who dreamt our basic dream in the old world while still a serf of kings. Whom dreamt a dream so strong, so brave, so true, that even yet it might, and yet its mighty daring sings. In every brick, the stone, in every furrow turned, that's made America the land it has become. Oh, I'm the man who sailed those early seas in search of what I meant to be my home. For I'm the one who left dark Ireland's shores, 
the Poland's plain and the England's grassy lee, and torn from black Africa's strand, I came to build a homeland of the free. The free? Who said the free? Not me. Surely not me. The millions on relief today, the millions shot down when they strike, the millions who have nothing for our pay, for all the dreams we've dreamed, and all the songs we've sung, and all the hopes we've held, and all the flags we've hung, the millions who have nothing for our pay, except the dream that's almost dead today. Oh, let America be America again. The land that never has been yet and yet must be. The land where every man is free. The land that's mine, the poor man's, Indians, Negroes, me? Who made America? Who made America? Whose sweat and blood, whose fate and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain must bring back our mighty dream Again, sure, call me any ugly name you choose. The seal of freedom does not stain from those who live like leeches on the people's lives. We must take back our land again, America. Oh, yes, I say it plain. America never was America to me. And yet, I swear this oath, America will be. Out of the rack and ruin of our gangster death, the rape and rot of wrath and stealth and lies, we, the people, must redeem the land, the mines, the plants, the rivers, the mountains, and the endless plain, all, all the stretch of these great green states, and make America again. And with that, I want to thank you for tuning in yet another week. Appreciate your support. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Hit the bell so that you can be notified every single time. And for those that are listening through Podbean, I do appreciate your support and continue to follow. Leave a comment below. Give me your thoughts. Let me know what you appreciated, what you enjoyed about this episode. Until next episode, love, peace, and happiness.